Hi everyone, hope you are all doing well and welcome back to some more New World. In today's video, I want to run through my top 25 tips that everyone should know in New World. Probably going to be more aimed at the newer players, but equally, I've been playing New World since Alpha and it's surprising how often I still keep learning new things about the game. But anyway, I want to kick things off. Tip number one, Azoth. More specifically, fast travel costs. Fast travelling, let's face it, is one of the most important aspects of the game. It really allows you to sort of cut down on the amount of time you're going to be spending trekking around New World on foot, which can get a little bit tedious quite quickly. But the Azoth bill from fast travelling can get pretty hefty pretty quickly. The actual cost is determined by faction ownership, travel distance, and most importantly, encumbrance. There isn't much you can easily do about the first two, but encumbrance, you can. If you've got 200 iron ore in your inventory, stick it in storage. Loads of spare weapons and armour, salvage them. If you're just making a really quick trip to just go and hand in a quest somewhere, visit someone, do something, dump all your stuff in storage if you're going to be able to come back and collect it, and you'll notice a huge reduction in Azoth fast travel costs. Since we just mentioned storage, for tip number two, I want to highlight that it is sort of possible to sometimes move items between your storage sheds, so long as the towns that you are moving it between belong to your faction, and you're prepared to pay the gold movement cost. It's not going to be useful in every situation, but it is occasionally helpful when you're sort of missing that key item and you know you've got it over in your shed in Everfall. For tip number three though, I want to move on to game settings. There are two key ones that I personally really like to change. Always show weapons and field of view. If you press escape, settings, gameplay, you'll see an option to turn on show weapons. And this will basically mean that both of your weapons are permanently displayed on your screen and so you can actually see their cooldown times as well. This is hugely useful because it means when you're in combat you know when the cooldown, you know, the key ability on your second weapon is coming off cooldown and you can switch and make use of both weapons. For field of view it is escape settings visuals. You'll see a field of view setting which by default is going to be set to 50 but if you actually change that to the max of 70, it has the effect of basically allowing you to zoom further out. It's a little confusing at first, but it does make a difference. And it can be very useful for getting a better view of your surroundings and seeing anyone try to sneak up on you. Number four, craft your own, purchase or blackmail someone else into crafting for you better bags. They are a key part of New World particularly as you level up and new bag slots become available. It hugely increases the amount of inventory space you'll have available. It's going to allow you to gather, hold and carry far more stuff than you otherwise would. And the starting one only plus 50 encumbrance is really not all that great. So yeah, well worth getting upgraded quickly. And talking of gathering stuff, for number five, always gather the honey from the hive and milk from the cow in towns. There is a cow in every starting region except for Everfall, and you're going to be getting like 20 milk or honey per gather. You might wonder why this is important at all, why should I bother, but both of these ingredients are classed as raw ingredients for cooking, which is going to be super helpful. Because for tip number 6, levelling your cooking is one of the easiest trade skills to get up because it has a very linear ingredient requirements, is quick to level, it gives good amounts of experience, and it's actually just kind of useful to be able to have a large stockpile of food. To explain the crafting requirements a little bit better, each tier of food requires one tier appropriate item. So for example, tier 2 food you need one tier 2 ingredient and one raw ingredient. And yes, milk and honey are raw ingredients. For a tier 3 food, you're going to need one tier 3 ingredient, i.e. something like a blueberry, which is super common in the world. You can gather hundreds on a gathering mission, and two raw ingredients. So you need blueberry, milk, and honey. For tier 4, you're going to need one tier 4 and three raw ingredients. Now I'd recommend broccoli as your tier 4 ingredient. There's actually quite a lot outside Everfall, so good little spot. But I'm going off topic. Too much detail. You get the idea of what I mean. And as you can see, you're going to be gathering a chunk of player XP and you can level this up super fast, so it's well worth doing. And as a final cooking topic finish, 
For tip number seven, always make sure you actually use the food you cook or buy or however you get it. Not only will it provide you with that sort of static 30 minute passive heal, but it's also going to provide you with that 20 second active heal. So it's absolutely critical for combat and outdoor running missions, PvE, PvP, whatever you're doing. You're also able to get food that increases luck, attributes, trade skills, etc. So it's not something to be dismissed. Food is a key part of New World. For tip number eight, though, let's talk about armor weights. In New World, this is broken down into light, medium, and heavy, which not only affects your mobility, such as the dodge you get access to, but also the amount of damage and healing that you're going to be able to do. For example, light armor gets a 20% damage boost over heavy armor. However, it is also worth remembering that armor weight is determined by just that, weight, not type. So, for example, you can actually get away with a medium chest piece, light gloves, light boot, light helmet, and still be classed as light armor. So it's important to check out your own armor encumbrance limits, check when you're going to be passing over from one category to the other, and actually decide and make a conscious decision about which armor weight that you want to be playing as. But talking of armor weights, for tip 9, you should ideally always be traveling in light armor, as it allows you to travel faster, particularly if you're going to be making use of dodge rolling and animation cancelling. Essentially, you want to be rolling forwards and at the end of the roll, changing weapon, or just pressing X to sort of sheath and unsheath, which basically cancels the roll animation. You then want your stamina bar to be sort of back above 51 before you're rolling again to stop your stamina bar from sort of going into recharge grey mode, but it's going to make your movement speed quite a lot faster. For tip number 10, you don't need to be levelling with the same weapons that you want to end up with. For example, I started the game sort of half a day late, so I was trying to catch up with the rest of my guild, and so I was predominantly playing solo. In the early game, this meant that sort of the hatchet was a really good starting choice due to the sustain from the berserker, makes it very sort of um, solo friendly as a weapon. Even though it wasn't the weapon I wanted to end up with, I wanted to end up with the rapier. So I was fine playing hatchet and then switched to the rapier later on. So you can level with different weapons to what you want to end up with later on in the game. Likewise, for number 11, with weapons, you do want to try and end up with a workable combination. Because despite being able to pair any weapon combinations in New World, they may not necessarily share the same attribute points. And as such, it can be kind of hard to get them to work effectively together. For example, to take the hatchet, it doesn't pair very well with, say, an ice gauntlet. One scales off intelligence, the other off strength and dexterity. So you'd either have to split your attribute points and you would have sort of half the damage extra sort of output from your attributes as another player, or all go into one, in which case one of the weapons is going to be pretty useless. So you do need to try and find weapon combinations that are at least going to partially work together. And in a smooth transition, this nicely leads us on to tip number 12, attribute points. Don't go fully into damage. You need some constitution. If you're running a class as a DPS, I'd be looking to put around 75% of my attributes into damage. So that'd be like dexterity for a musket. And 25% into constitution. Glass cannons just don't really work very well in this game. I'm sure a few of you will have exceptions to this and builds where it is viable for you. But on the whole, on average, you really need some survivability. And that means you're going to need some constitution in your build. If you got this wrong, however, at the start, for tip 13, I'm here to tell you that up to level 20, you can fully reset your attributes for free, and up to level 11 on weapon mastery points. You can, of course, still reset your attributes and weapon masteries after this, but it is no longer free and there is a cost involved. One selection you cannot reset, though, is your territory standing cards. So, for tip 14, I want to emphasise how important it is that you think about your selections. For example, most players will probably end up picking the XP gain cards. It's great whilst you're levelling, but what happens when you hit level 60? You can no longer gain XP. So these cards, these permanent cards, 
will start to become utterly useless. What about trading tax? It's going to be really quite useful probably in your hub town. Maybe, you know, Everfall as an example. But it's not going to be a lot of use over in Restless Shore if you've not got anything stored there, have no intention of using the market. My point being, think ahead with your card choices. You can't change them and they are permanent, so you need to get them right first time around. For tip 15, let's talk town projects. They've had a real roller coaster since Alpha and have really been nerfed quite a lot, but they can still be a really viable way of levelling up. However, there are a few trap cards that you're going to want to avoid. For example, some of the rarer animals, bison, sheep, some of the cooking hamper quests, fishing items. Because these are all town projects that you're not really going to be bumping into as you're doing other stuff, but you'd have to sort of go out of your way to find. And the time to XP ratio just isn't worth it. However, a leveling method that is worth it for tip 16 is corrupted portals. These are portals that you'll find have sprung up around the map and normally consist of a sort of large central portal or monolith and five smaller versions surrounding it. You ideally want to be running these in groups of five and the idea is to start knocking them out quickly. I've actually got sort of a fully separate guide on these so I'm not going to go into detail but not only do you get good XP for closing the portals but you also get loads of territory standing. And when you level up your territory standing, you get a good chunk of XP to go with it. Double win. For tip 17, as we just talked about with the portals above, running in a group can often make life a lot easier when it comes to questing, or just even tackling some of the higher level areas. And actually, it's going to allow you to level up a lot faster because you can tackle these areas and quests so much quicker. So it is worth grouping up with friends, or maybe considering trying to find a guild to join. For number 18, make sure that you gather, skin, mine and harvest everything as you go. Not only does this give you a good amount of resources to use, craft with or sell when you get back to town, but it will also go a long way to starting to level up your trade skills, some of which will be required for later areas and quests. And for tip 19, in a similar vein, be sure to make all the quests you come across. It can sometimes be tempting to leave them and come back later, but New World has a very nice and very clear journal system, so it's really unnecessary. Collect them all as you go because it's surprising how many quests end up cutting across different regions. For number 20, be sure to pick a core hub town. This is where you're going to be storing the bulk of your resources, crafting your higher tier items, trading on the market, etc. For me, this is going to be Everfall, which on most servers will end up probably being the primary main market town. But maybe you would want to pick the area your company owns or the region where you spend the bulk of your time. But whatever region it is, it does make sense to sort of have that central hub town. A few random tips now, but for tip 21, Spawn dying is still a thing. We used to have a respawn button in the game, but this has since been removed. But actually, this really only acted as a suicide mechanic. If you die to mobs or drown yourself in a river, you actually get the same effect, which is the option to respawn back at town, which can save yourself an awful lot of walking. Tip 22, be sure to upgrade your harvesting tools. Running around with flint tools will make your gathering so much slower than it needs to be. You can either craft these yourself or go and buy them off the market, but be sure to keep upgrading them as your character levels up. For tip number 23, a word on taxes. There was actually recently a Reddit thread about this where someone got caught out by very expensive property taxes as different towns are going to have different tax rates as the tax rates are going to be set by the governing company. It's not a fixed rate across a turnum. It gives you a little pop-up as you kind of walk into town as well as sort of a recommendation as if this is cheap or if it's very expensive. And you want to try and avoid doing large amounts of crafting or buying houses where areas where taxes are going to be extremely expensive and it's going to cost you significantly more in the long run so best to try and avoid these areas. Two left to go and for number 24 make use of either New World Map or Map Genie. 
I'll try and link them both in the description down below as both are fantastic sites that allow you to see resource locations as well as areas, monsters, chests, NPC locations. It makes your life so much easier, particularly when you're looking for a specific resource or a specific targeted area and you just can't find it. So absolutely well worth checking these sites out. And in all honesty, I haven't got a proper 25th tip, but I've already made the video thumbnail and I am far too la lazy to change it from 25 to 24. So I'll end by saying, have fun. People get very drawn into the game's grind and levelling up, which is great. But don't lose sight of the fact that this is a game to be enjoyed. And uh, yeah, don't get too carried away. If you have any questions though about any of the tips in today's video, please ask in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. Lots more New World content on the way, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.